A quantum leap is the experience of space in order to collapse time that it takes to get to your destination. Here at the Mystic and the Magician podcast, we are going to teach you how to do that, the best ways to do it, and the most fulfilling results that you could experience. Hi, welcome back to the Mystic and the Magician podcast. I'm your host, Cassandra, and my co-host, Spring, is here. And today we're going to be talking about ways to motivate yourself and some of the things that are kind of important when it comes to taking action on things that you're uncomfortable or afraid of. Just we have seen a lot of people lately in our lives um, afraid to take action or afraid to practice or afraid to integrate the strategies into their life. Um Every emotion, I say afraid because it's not necessarily afraid, but every emotion generally comes from fear or love, right? Yeah. So, like, like if you love something, like, it's going to be on the more positive aspect, optimism, hope, um, positivity. If you're afraid of something, like, jealousy could be, like, you're afraid that you won't become what someone else has or have what someone else has. That's jealousy. Like, it's a fear. Everything that's negative or on the negative scale of emotions is a fear-based emotion. So, um, I channeled a pretty cool story the other day in our group for the Monday live video and it went, it started off, hold on, let me flip my page back. (laughs) It started off with such a grand opening when I was like, I was like, what am I going to talk about today? And then this like Native American presence came through and it started literally word for word across the great plain. There once lived a serpent. (laughs) <laughs> I was like, I was like, let me get my pen. This is going to be good. <laughs> um, and the story basically talks about how there was a serpent and the serpent lived in um, a world that it adapted to. It lived in the shadows. It had everything it needed. It had food, water, you know, all of the space that it needed. It went kind of unnoticed. Serpents go kind of unnoticed. And it's all of its needs were met. It adapted to its world around it. Snakes are very adaptable to their environment. You see them in all different kinds of environments. They're in water. They're on land. They're in very hot desert sands. They're in all kinds of stuff. Um, so... That was the one end of the spectrum, and then I I cut to seeing a wolf, and it basically said the wolf can face more battles than the snake because it's bold, and it comes out into the open, and it climbs mountains, and it howls from the mountaintops, and, you know, it's okay that the wolf has to go into battle sometimes because it's enjoying its experience, and the world around the wolf adapts to its presence, and that is true because the prey of the wolf hides from it, you know, like everything around the environment of the wolf kind of adapts to it. So, um, that being said, I channeled that story and I thought there was a lot of really good details in that story about how to kind of help people get perspective on taking action. You know, I think one of the biggest, um, fears, well, for me personally, the biggest fear that I have is the fear of judgment. Um, I am really bad about posting on my live, on my personal Facebook page with people who actually know me. So I actually just consulted this fear the other day because this is actually something we go through. We both go through. We both go through this. And I started doing live videos on my personal page again. But it, you're right. It is harder because we know in our group those are our people. We right. can, we're authentic in there. And if they don't like our authenticity, they leave the group. You know what I mean? Right. Well, it's, it's true. Like, okay, I love group mythology. I love mythology. I love any kind of stories. Um, I grew up. Um, between two Indian reservations in New Mexico. I listened to every legend I could get from the Native Americans. I mean, it was, I am open to all stories and legends. And um, I posted something about Lilith and I got a lot of hate from it for it. And then yesterday I posted about hagstones and somebody wanted to hop on there and share their knowledge there. And I was like, look, I ain't going to What was their knowledge? That you could not purchase a hagstone or it won't have magic. And I was like, look, I ain't going to die fighting a water moccasin to go try to hunt one down. I'm going to call my friend with the crystal store and she's going to send me one. (laughs) I don't care. I get it. You know, I don't listen to the the, um, um, superstitions 
I always throw back to the off the office where he's like, I'm not superstitious. I might be a little stitious. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't listen to the superstitions of the community because first of all, that is training your subconscious to create the belief, right? We know that we know that superstitions, they are real to the people that believe them because their subconscious is trained to create those things. And we yeah. understand that that's how energy works. But also there's a lot in the, um, energy and magical communities there's like half of people believe that you should never charge for your gifts half of people believe that you should charge ten thousand dollars for your gifts like it's it's really just you know i don't pay attention to what other people believe or are doing i pay attention to the facts about energy how it works and i try to give people just an unbiased based thing and you can do whatever you want with that Right, but when it's coming from people who know you, you know, like, and most of mine are actually relatives. Right. Um, then you're dealing with, like, everybody in my family thinks I'm nuts. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, and, like, so I hate it. Like, I hate getting on there. I hate when all these people, and I'm like, I know your life. Again, we're related. I know that you sit home and you drink too much and you never smile. And, you know, you've been angry ever since your cat ran away. I know these things, and now you're projecting. You know that, that they're judging it. themselves by judging you, because because right. judgment is really judgment of the self, right? It so really like, is. but it sucks to be. Here's the thing: is that no matter how much you heal your own self judgment, you cannot prevent people from putting their self judgments on you. Yeah, and, and it, that that's hard. And it sucks when you know that everything you're going to post is going to trigger somebody. Um, when we posted our group, it's awesome. Like this was a great post. It got over 25 comments on it within an hour of me posting it. Yeah. People loved it. It also got, um, mystic Jade, another member in her group and another client. And so it was like, it was a great, great post. Yeah. But yeah, now I still had to deal with somebody's ugliness. And so every time I go to post, I always have that oh, who am I going to trigger today? Right, like, who's going to jump on my stuff? Who does this post give permission to, <laughs> to, like, project their shit onto me? Right. That's, I mean, that's a tough thing. That It is a tough thing. But one of the things that I'm incorporating specifically lately because I have been going live on my personal page again because I'm trying to reconquer that fear because we both did a live challenge on yeah. our personal pages where we went live every day. We got comfortable with it. We kind of like told the people on our friends list, like, this is what's up. Like, this is what comes with being on my quote unquote friends list. Right. Um, but still like every now and then, cause my friends are always going up and down because I get a lot of like network marketers and people on there. And every now and then I'll get someone, I did a carpool and someone said something about like, you should only believe in God that's my favorite one. <laughs> that's my favorite one because like we talked about on the last episode with Heather, like it's all one. It's, all it's one. just a limited perspective of one thing. But I wanted to um, say that like specifically for this one, we have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. And I was actually talking to one of our clients about this the other day about um putting yourself out there because she's been getting a lot of signs and messages that she's going to meet her soulmate next month right so we were talking and she was like you know i was like what do you do like how do you meet people how can you meet your soulmate because you can meet your soulmate next month and you got that message loud and clear but you're not going to meet him sitting on your couch Right. <laughs> I was like, you have to start hanging out with people and meeting people. And in order to meet people, in order to get what you want out of the universe and provide what you have into the universe, you have to get comfortable putting yourself out there. And it's like this really like <coughs> funny boundary because that scared the shit out of her. And it's so funny because I could laugh at us right now thinking about that because that scared the shit out of her. And I actually, um, she lives in the same area that my brother's in right now. And I gave her my brother's Facebook. And I was like, dude, he's over there. He doesn't know anybody. Like, he could be your first step. Like, no pressure. You don't have to date him. Just hang out. Like, meet new people. Like, get out there. Like, maybe your soulmate goes to school with him. That's why he's down there. You know, like, just... I, know. I, saw, I saw your brother. He's cute. My brother is so... <laughs> 
so adorable. And he's like a nice guy. He's not like a fuck boy. He's like an actual nice guy. So would it that be funny if that was her soulmate? <laughs> it would be so funny. I would laugh so hard. So like it was so this is what happened and this is what made me laugh even more because this is how the world really works, right? So I sent her his Facebook and I sent him her Facebook. And so he texts me back and I want you to know that that's a miracle in itself. Cause my brother never texts me back. Okay. <laughs> he texted me back and he goes, you know, Cassandra, she's really cute, but I'm really awkward. Oh, <laughs> he was like, and if I text, he said, I, most of the times when I talk, he's been single for a long time. And it's because he said, most of the time when I start texting a girl, my texts are awkward or misconstrued, or I don't feel like they understand me. And then it always ends up falling off. So I don't want to reach out to her. And I said, okay, okay, okay. So I told the girl that our client and, um, she said, I feel the same way. That's why I don't want to reach out to people. And I'm like, well, what if, like, I'm not saying he's your soulmate, but what if your soulmate that you're supposed to meet next month is like that? If two people, if two people are terrified to put themselves out there, they will never connect. Someone's got to take the risk. Yeah. And so it's really funny because, and this applies to everything. This applies to us with business. It applies to like us getting on social media. It applies to like all of these different things. But when I decided that I was ready to start dating again after I had been single for five years, the year that I met Kevin, I didn't meet him right away. I'll have you know. But that year I started putting myself out there and this is what I wanted to do. I had a mission. I wanted to conquer my fear of rejection. So I asked out every person that I saw, every guy. I asked out every guy. If I passed a cute guy, I asked for his number. And I wanted to conquer <laughs> my fear of rejection. I wanted to conquer that. You know, I asked guys out for six months before I met Kevin and no one ever told me no. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a fear that's not even real. <laughs> I, I mean, I've put myself like, I mean... I had people on my Facebook page who were from the Mormon church. I had majority of my people were from the Mormon church and I went ahead and just kept putting myself out there. I figure if they're uncomfortable, they'll leave. You know, I did block a few of them that I just knew like my Bishop. I was like, you know, he was there for me a lot of times and I did not want him to worry. Yeah. (laughs) I went ahead and blocked him and removed him and everything. But, um, there was, um, a lot of people who were from my circle, friends of mine who have reached out to me and I have helped um, that I didn't even know were into that. Like one girl was super nervous about going to nursing school, decided to back out because family judgment was like, oh, you're not smart enough. You have ADHD. You can't do this. She said, oh, you're right. I can't do this. I sent her a text of a card spread I did for her and she went in and registered for school the next week. That's amazing. That is so amazing. And you actually help someone with their house. Yes. So by me conquering my fear, I've actually helped people in on top. Yes. Every post I post, I do have to deal with some judgment and ass, but, but the impact that it makes is totally more than that. Yeah. So like, it really helps to be able to conquer that and really get comfortable putting yourself out there. And it's not uncomfortable forever. It's not, it's not. I hope so. I would love to get to a point where I could just get on my Facebook, share a post and, you know, be like, yeah, this is awesome. I, you know, if you don't like it, don't look, you know, (laughs) my, my sister-in-law is a diehard Democrat. I'm a diehard Republican. I don't comment on her crap, but she comments on mine. (laughs) Mm. I just don't I have political opinions I I keep them to myself unless it directly affects my children and then I'm like the mama bear comes out but like (laughs) other than that like if if there's like political things that are going on I kind of try to keep that narrative like like out of general I just don't I don't like confrontation, but it was like that story of the wolf. Like the wolf has confrontation sometimes, but the world adapts to the wolf. Well, gosh forbid, if you come on there and talk about a stone, (laughs) 
But you know, that's how you get trained to be like the serpent. <laughs> right. Because if you have a lot of wolves around you that are like, no, the world's going to adapt to me and I'm going to put my opinion in everything, then you become like the serpent and you try to just like slither under the radar. But when you're in a business like we are in and when you're trying to make an impact like we are, we have to be comfortable being authentic and being wolves too and being like, if you want to step on my territory, I will bite your head off. And sometimes the situation <laughs> calls for that. Like, it's not not spiritual to hold your ground right and i think that people get confused because holding your ground is important and also like the other big thing that we're seeing a lot of is i don't want to practice because i suck or i don't want to fail or i'm gonna suck or i'm not good enough for it yet or i want to wait until i'm absolutely perfect to take the first step yeah. Oh my gosh. I hate hearing that I'm waiting to get it perfect. Dude, it will never be perfect. It's never going to be perfect. <laughs> it's never going to be perfect. We're rebranding again for like the third time in one year. It's never going to be perfect. And we don't even give a shit. No one even cares. No one cares. No one cares how many times I change the header in the group. No one cares. Nope. No yeah. one cares at all. And like you're really this is a big thing and rachel hollis emphasized this in one of her books and i will literally never forget it and kyle cease even said it so many spiritual mentors kyle cease said you're only ever as happy as you're willing to be sad and rachel hollis said be willing to fail at something as many times as it takes to succeed and i said <laughs> You're not going to be good if you don't suck first. You have to be <laughs> willing to suck first. You have to be willing to take that chance. Every time I think I'm going to suck, though, I don't. Isn't that funny how that works? Yeah. I was thinking this morning about um, how tired I was. And I was like, you know, I'm just really tired. And I'm like, why am I tired? I'm tired because we have clients all day. We won't be done with people until after 10 o'clock tonight. Yes. Like, huh. And we have kids we're homeschooling, so it's two jobs. That's it's, huge. Yeah. yeah. So it's huge. It's huge compared to where we were last year. And I never, ever, ever would have thought we would be to the point where we were seeing clients from 10 to 10. All day. <laughs> All day long. All day. Yes. I mean, so this time last year, we were contemplating hiring a coach. Yeah. This was... Exactly one year ago, we were getting ready to hire our first coach. This business wasn't even thought of yet. We didn't even know each other yet. Nope. And we're seeing all day clients. Our income is consistently at one level. Like it's never like we have it set up to where we know what's coming in every month. But we, unless, uh, but we're still building. Yeah. Be consistent. So that was something that was really important to us when we started. Um, we wanted our income to be consistent. We didn't want to have like, oh, we had a launch and we had, you know, $100,000. And I don't know how many people are going to sign up and blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. We wanted to just generate our income to be steady so that no matter what, we were still bringing in the same amount of money. And we've done that. It was something that we said, we sat down, said we wanted, and it, we just did it. Dude, we did it within like three months. <laughs> yeah. And if you so think about that, we did it within like three months. So when we turn around and say, I need this, I need this, there's none of us like, oh my gosh, I don't, you know, oh, I don't know. I'm scared. I don't want to do, no. When you sit in lollygag, you don't move forward. But also another key in ingredient to doing that, to being able to do that. And this is another thing that I've been trying to tell people. You have to find your motivation. We were motivated. We were motivated people. Our fears became less important than our motivation. They still existed. We were still scared. We still didn't know what was going to happen. We still didn't know how people were going to see us. We still didn't know the backlash we were going to get. And we even lost people from our lives. Yeah. <laughs> we even lost people from our lives. But we had motivation and resilience. Right. And that's what we, like, we've talked about before has really, you know, set us apart from other people because of our resilience, because of our motivation. We don't care what other people are doing. For whatever no. reason, sometimes people care what we're doing, and I don't understand that, but <laughs> we don't care what other people are doing. And 
we come forward and we come up with this thing and we'll like develop a technique and we'll talk about something and we'll be like, oh my God, people need this. People need to know about this. This is amazing. This is life changing. We did recently launch a course. It was, we felt like it was completely crazy, but it was so awesome. It was such good stuff. It was so good. Not a single person bought it. But that's okay. That's okay because you know what? That's some good stuff in there. <laughs> that's well, okay. I fully pretend. I fully. What was I going to say? I fully am going to use that again. Yeah. I mean, it was like, it's really good stuff. We might launch the course with it later on, but people weren't ready for it. I mean, it had some really high, deep stuff in there, and people weren't ready for it. But and. Normally, like a year ago, I would have never, ever, ever tried to put a course together that taught people how to channel archangels and starseed families. Oh my gosh, yes. (laughs) And it was, this is crazy. The reason that we put this course together was because after, well, you were working with archangels, but for me, it was because after I developed full mediumship, connected with my guides, was able to quantum manifest, was able to quantum heal, was able to do all of these things, I wanted to go to the next level. I wanted to contact the star beings, the Palladians, the Arcturians, the, (coughs) I guess the raw civilization, because they contacted me, but I didn't even have that on my radar, but I wanted to learn how to do all of that. And I wanted to go to the next level of channeling. And I I couldn't find one person to go to for that. You know, I asked around, I made posts about it in groups of spiritual people of 30,000 trying to find someone to train me to do that. And I was ready to invest. I even did single sessions with a couple people to try it out and see if they had something that could take me to that level. And then I would invest in them, but they didn't have it. Um, And so that's why I put it together because when I did learn how to do it, I was like, no one has this. I looked for it. Trust me. I looked for it. No one has this like second level, like channeling full abilities. I guess, um, sometimes two people are afraid to offer it because of a, because people won't buy it, which we don't care about. (laughs) And because B, I think that there's a fear associated with coaches giving away their strategy sometimes. Or just a way of fear of how it would be perceived. Um, I feel like ours wasn't perceived very well. I just feel like people weren't. um, I I felt like we aimed so high that it just like went over the top of people's heads that people weren't ready to channel that kind of stuff. I don't know. Well, that for me, it honestly wasn't even about the money. It was me like coming into the open in my authentic self about where I was actually at and not playing small in this like mediumship psychic development role anymore. So it really served a huge purpose for me in that light. But I just, um, I think that also sometimes coaches, they don't offer things like that because of that or also because... I think there's a fear sometimes that if they give away their strategies, how will they make money? What will set them apart from the rest? And, but I'm here to fucking like sell all of my strategies. Right. Everything. I develop strategies with my clients specific to their stuff. Like I want people to have the strategies because I want the impact to be world changing. Right. And I can't change the world by myself. So I'm going to have to sell some strategies. (laughs) <laughs> yeah but there was no fear associated with launching that we were just we went out there we ran a three-day master class on it videos every day <laughs> yeah and the master class was good i still think the master class brings value and we can keep it on as a one-on-one service but i just don't think i think that it's okay to be your authentic self mm-hmm. even if no one buys it yep Because eventually someone's going to come and be like, this is what I've been looking for. Like, I just started following a coach that talks about this stuff. And I had never seen her before on my page. But I just started following her and reading all of her posts because she started talking about some of the stuff that we talk about. And it made me want to learn about some of the things that she talks about. And you never know what people are looking for people to connect to on this level. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
like I would have never thought that another coach coach would be posting about like reptilians and like all of this stuff, you know? So like <laughs> and she doesn't do it in like a fear, like be afraid way, which I don't like the fear thing. Right. I definitely got messages from a group one time from someone telling me that the world was ending and I needed to repent and stuff. <laughs> I, was just like, I was like, you know, I don't like the fear you're bringing into my life right now. I already have enough problems with that. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm going to need you to move on. It's, it's oh man, I hate the, I hate the judgment. <laughs> so exhausting. I literally just say that. Like, I don't like the fear you're bringing into my life right now. Like, you need to turn around and exit stage left because <laughs> this is not the space for you, my friend. But, yeah, like, yeah, I think that people just need to start stuff. Definitely. We just start stuff. And Definitely. we just, like, we plant all the seeds. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes we channel the seeds that are going to grow and then they, we plant them and they grow amazingly. And sometimes we're just like, Hey, let's just try this out because it's good for us, for our soul to just try it out, you know, just for that experience because we get to pick and choose what experiences we have. Like, yes, we could definitely channel every single move if we wanted to, but that would take away from our experience. So I think we have a healthy balance of just trying things for experience, getting into this like habit of being authentic. And I think, that other people need to start incorporating that as well in order to help them get to the next level because ultimately and this whole like failure thing cracks me up because everyone is af afraid to fail but like failure is a thing we made up in our head it really is I mean when I think about everything that we've done this last year you know failure wasn't an option so we just did it did it did it did it and it was like wow no, it was not an option because we had, we had, we were at our last, we were at wit's end. We were at our bottom. There was I mean, no other time I think that, you know, well, this is, this is a bad idea, but I just go for it anyway. And it never turns out that way. It never, there's never a bad experience with it. Dude, even, even that course that we ran that no one bought, that would be my third course that I've ran that no one bought. That happens sometimes. It's just a thing that happens sometimes. Does anyone know that no one bought it until we say it? No. I don't think so. No one's judging us for that. The right. only time people know that something you put out there doesn't sell is when you tell them. So when you have a fear of failure, who, what are you afraid of? Because like you said, no one knows. No one knows it was a failure. So no one knows. That's what I'm saying. Like it's, it's a Am thing I you make afraid up. Of my telling myself no one bought it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all it was was an experience and no one bought it. And that's it. I, that's all it was. And we make it, it, we make it more in our heads sometimes. And it like, was a cool, cool ass experience. I mean, we channeled some awesome, awesome stuff getting ready for that course. And it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean anything. See, that's the thing with the human brain. Like sometimes we make things mean stuff and it doesn't have to. <laughs> like right. it was an experience. We did a launch. It didn't sell. That's, that doesn't make us failures. Right. We have plenty of successful launches. My first two launches did not sell, ever. My first two launches did not sell. So what I could have easily done was said, obviously this isn't meant for me. It's not working out. I'm not good enough for this and quit. But if I had done that after my first two did not sell, then I would not be here. Well, and then one of your courses that didn't sell any but thing was your intuitive development class that you continuously have clients in now. Mm -hmm. You always. That's my biggest selling service. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah. You and it failed twice. It yeah. failed twice. And you continuously have clients enrolled in it. Yes. Multiple clients. Yes. But they didn't want to work in a group. They wanted to work one-on-one. -on -one. So maybe with something you're looking at it like a failure, but it wasn't necessarily a failure. It was a redirect. Yeah. That's why when group courses don't work out in a launch, I keep them on as one-on-one -on -one services because when you're entering the metaphysical stuff, sometimes people don't feel comfortable in a group setting yet. And that's the truth. 
Yep. Sometimes people don't want you to post their picture and say, congratulations, thanks for enrolling, blah, blah, blah. Like sometimes <laughs> Thanks for like, telling no, everyone please. I'm crazy. Yeah, don't, like, <laughs> yeah, don't tell people I spent money on this. You know what I mean? People want to be one-on-one -on -one sometimes with certain things until they're at that level. And that's totally okay. So when, when a group course doesn't work out, I just keep it as a one-on-one -on -one service because it doesn't make it any less valuable. No. No. And that's, I think that's, it's really interesting though, to, to definitely take something and maybe as a redirect. So you're still getting, you get the experience you st and you didn't fail. You didn't fail on those two launches. You redirected and you've made thousands off of it. By your failed course made you thousands of dollars. <laughs> yeah. Quite a few thousands of dollars. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, in the last, last like six to seven months, I've coached almost 20 people in that program. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's that been a failure. That was yeah. a failure over there. <laughs> Good thing I didn't quit. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's really interesting. Yeah. It really my, is. My, I had three websites before I had this one and yeah. you know I could have quit but instead I redirected and now we have this business you have to be willing to keep failing until one works and that's a thing that's a thing that I've done my whole life and I'm sure you've done it your whole life too but because it's correct it's not really failures right it's not, failure isn't real. They're just experiences. Like I went to college. I didn't graduate college. You want to know why I didn't graduate college? Because college is a scam. Because I realized that for a degree that is said to take four years, I needed four years in prereqs to take the, the degree courses that take four years. It was like a ridiculous scam. And so I took a lot of the classes and I did really well in them. I quit high school twice. Did you know that? I dropped out twice. I dropped out and then I went back and I was like, no, we're going to do this. And then they put me in classes I already had credits for. So I wasn't like getting anywhere. So then I dropped out again and I got my GED and then I went to college. So you sometimes shit just isn't meant to work out that way, but that's okay. That doesn't mean you give up. Right. You redirect into something different. Yeah. I am the queen of burn it down and start somewhere else. Like, I'm the queen of that. So, like, I don't think of anything as a failure. And I've had people project, like, failure on me and say, like, you're unstable. You can't figure out which way you want to go. Like, blah, blah, blah. I've had a lot of people tell me that in my life. And I didn't even listen to that. I was like, no, this works for me. This is my life. And this is the way that it works for me. And it works out good. Mind your own life. I don't care what it looks like. <laughs> That's what I was saying yesterday when I realized that I was a water sign, you were an air sign, and I was like, Oh, oh we're both God. all over the place. <laughs> we both just go with the flow. <laughs> yeah. You no, know, the wind's blowing. <laughs> Let's change. <laughs> and we do. We do. We change so much. We grow so much. We evolve so much. And that's the that's the thing. And I've like worked a lot of different jobs at a lot of different types of places. And it's always I've always left because I'm not designed in my soul, I would literally never feel fulfilled or happy if I was doing the same thing over and over every day. Even as a bartender doing the same like chores at the bar, talking to the same people, like I couldn't do that shit every day. Yeah. So it works. We, we switch constantly. We're always offering something way different. Every course we launch is going to be different than the course before that. And we have yet to rerun a course. Yeah, we've never rerun a course. We've talked about it because we have really good courses and we're like, oh, this is, this could be our flagship course, but we never run another course. Honestly, I'm, I'm a little bit afraid to make like a signature course for us because people get attached to their signature courses because they put a lot of like love and energy into them. And then when it's time to evolve, they don't want to let them go. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm all for not getting attached <laughs> I'm like really good at not getting attached to stuff. I'm just like, okay, this is serving me right now. And I go into experience knowing that it's serving me right now. And then when it's done serving me, I let it leave. If it's time to serve me again, we can like run it again. You know, I just don't, I don't feel the need to get attached to stuff. 
In fact, I'm getting detached from stuff because I'm getting rid of all the shit in my house because that's another thing that holds people back that we've been talking about. Yes. Well, one thing that I've noticed, um, we were talking about just, you know, some emotional issues we were both dealing with. And we both turned around. We've been constantly working. We have been working nonstop since we started this business, which it's been almost a year. And I was like, we're exhausted. Our houses kind of look like we've been working for a year. Things yeah, shady in my house. <laughs> so There's I clutter in all the corners. Much. So and much. I, I was thinking because they tell you like, what would your millionaire self do? Well, my millionaire self would not have clutter in all the corners. Oh my gosh! Yeah, my, my millionaire self would not have that. So this week, I'm getting rid of all of the stuff. I have so much extra clothes. I probably wear the same seven pairs of pants every week. Why do I have so much clothes? Why? I don't, there's no reason for that. I have a whole giant thing by my front door of everyone's shoes. This thing must have 150 pairs of shoes in it. I'm not even joking. (laughs) You can't even find shoes in there. It's got so much shoes in it. And we don't need that many shoes. Right? Like I'm getting rid of all of this stuff this week because another thing that really seriously happens that we've discussed, and this is like a spiritual law or whatever, is that you have to make room for new things to come. You and do. We, we don't have room. You have to. I really want new furniture. So I started throwing all my furniture out. My husband's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm making room for new furniture. And he's like, we need to remodel the kitchen first. <laughs> I did that with my car. But you got, like, free stuff. You got a free hot tub, didn't you? You got, like... Right. You got a free like bathtub. You really manifest some stuff when you need stuff. And so we have to make room first. I did that with my car when I wanted a new car. It might've been last year. It might've been two years ago. I don't know when I got my car. Time's been real fuzzy lately. But um, when I wanted a new car, my car kept breaking down. I gave that shit right to my mom. I didn't have a car. I gave her my car. I was like, no, I need a new car. Take this car. She took the car. She came and got the car. I rented a car and I did it. Yeah. It might've been last year, right before we started. Like I bought my car right before we invested in our first coach because I rented a car through Lyft and I drove Lyft to get my car. Oh, wow. And that's what I did. That's cool. Yeah. Hey, yeah, you, you, you found it. You made room for it. Yeah, I made room for it. And I couldn't do lift in that car because it was too old. They have, like, these right. qualifications you have to meet. And I wanted to do, like, a side hustle and make money for a car. And I did that. Yeah. Yep. You yeah, have to-, to do that with his car. He's got my old car. When we first started having children, I drove a sports car. Then we had too many children for the sports car and he made me get rid of it. And (laughs) when I did, I was like, fine. Then I got a three seater SUV giant mom mobile. And when my kids started leaving the house, he bought me a new sports car. And so then I was like, okay, so he took my car. So he's still driving the mom mobile. We've had that car (laughs) for like 20 years. I was like, it's time to let it go. Oh my God. I'm like, please get rid of it so we can manifest a new one. And he's like, that's not the way it works. (laughs) He has no (laughs) right. Men, they don't understand. They don't understand the way it works. Don't tell me how it works. Right? Because watch, watch me now. (laughs) First of all, tell me one thing that you manifested and tell me five things that I manifested. Right. Right. So don't come to me and tell me how it works. (laughs) Exactly. I was like, she whiz. That is one thing. I should actually gut my kitchen so I can get a new kitchen. See, that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes <laughs> I have to force myself into situations like that. Like, no joke. When I quit a job, I don't have anything else lined up. I just quit because then I'm forced to find it. Because if I have a job and I need a new job, I'm making excuses. I don't have time. I'm always at work. And then I have kids. And then I don't ever find a new job. And then I'm miserable for way extra months. So I just quit that shit. I like shove that shit out. I'm like, okay, this is what we're doing now. So that's what you, sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes you have to light a fire under your own ass or you're never going to get around to it. And you're going to keep letting your comfort zone control you. Yep. 
or your mine was like, if I got this kitchen, I'm not going to have the money right now to put it back together. And it could stay like this for a year. And that was like my big fear was that. But Or you could knock on it and it could stay like that for a year. For years. Because it's already <laughs> yeah. years. years. If I had just gutted it, it would only be a year at the yeah. most. That's what I'm saying. Like, or you could not gut it and it could still just okay. be like that. That's what people don't understand is that, like, you're really not doing anything worse that's already happened. It's true. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's it. I'm, I can't show up for any of our clients this afternoon. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> so this time next year I'll have a new kitchen. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be like gutting my whole house, but not in the way you're gutting your whole house. <laughs> I mean, I was, was on the phone with weekend. I'm driving like half of my stuff up to my mom to meet her oh, halfway, and I was like, I was like, do you need hangers? Do you need shoes? Do you need clothes? Do you need a computer? I have a whole extra computer. Like, what is all this stuff doing here? I'm, like, looking in the creases. Literally, this computer, it's so funny. My house is so cluttered right now. This computer is a desktop, but it's just, like, the screen part. It doesn't have a box. And it's, like, wedged in the crack with the yoga mats. So I'm, like, looking through all of this clutter, and I'm, like, this is a computer next to the yoga mats. Like, why do we have this? It's crazy. Like, I know our stuff breeds at night while we're sleeping, but I mean, I went in and cleaned out every corner of my house last weekend. I had, I got rid of all my moving boxes when we moved into our house. Somehow, my corners of my houses were all packed with moving boxes. And I'm talking like I had 15 moving boxes behind my china cabinet. Where am I going? (laughs) Nowhere. Why, (laughs) why do you have those? Why do I have moving boxes? You know what's funny? And with. I'm the same way. And in my basement, I have a ton of moving boxes from when I moved in. Why am I so scared to just get new boxes? If I move, I can get new boxes. What am I doing? My moving boxes. They weren't even mine. <laughs> I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. What am I doing? Like why? And, and here's the thing. I have so much clothes. You want to know why I have so much clothes? Because I've gone from 125 pounds to 160 pounds to 140 pounds to 170 pounds. And so I have all these clothes because if I lose weight, I can have clothes. And if I gain weight, I can have clothes. Why am I so scared to buy new clothes? You know, half my leggings have holes in the asses. Like they can just go. Right. Like why am I holding on to like, shirts from 2012 like why do i have that one thing that made me mad is i had this new pair of jeans i bought when i had hit my heaviest weight and when i lost the weight i kept the jeans and then when i gained the weight i was so happy i had those pants because i was able to put them back on i was like damn if i had just got rid of them i wouldn't have gained the weight they were my safety jeans right (laughs) yeah that's where i'm at now I want to get rid of all that stuff. Yeah. I don't want safety stuff. No what? safety stuff. St- That's safe- what it is. It's safety crap. It's what safety stuff. Safety crap. Why are we, we're creating a false sense of safety because we're not even, that's fake too. I'm not that's like, I have no plans to move. Not right now. I don't need moving boxes. If I move, I'm going to have enough money to move where I can get boxes. Right. Like, next time I move, I'm buying a whole house. So I will think I'll be able to get some boxes. Right. And if not, the liquor store has them for free. Right. Like, what am I doing? The liquor store has a lot of boxes. Why do we do this to ourselves? We need to stop. Fear. (laughs) We have fake projected fear, you know? I'm like, oh, I don't want to throw a box away because boxes are hard to come by. (laughs) The liquor store has them free. You want to know what's crazy? The metaphysical shit that we talk about isn't crazy. What's crazy is we create a problem in our mind and then we try to solve it. We're like, oh my God, I might move one day. I'm going to solve it by keeping these boxes. Oh my God, I might gain 20 pounds. We create a problem. It doesn't even yet exist. It doesn't even exist. We're, oh my gosh, I might gain 20 pounds and then I won't have any clothes. So I should keep all of these clothes. We create a problem in our head and then we solve it in our head and it like literally fills up with stuff. My kitchen is a nightmare. It's like straight out of the 1800s when my house was built. It's a freaking nightmare. Linoleum's peeling up because my husband jacked it up. He 
stained table on it because we were going to put new kitchen floors in. And then he's like, oh, you know, I switched jobs. We don't have enough money. You know, we need to not worry about that right now. And I'm like, three years later, my kitchen still isn't done. If I had gone in there now and started gutting it, we would slowly be putting it back together. This time next year, I will have a kitchen. But I have this fake sense that if I tear it apart, I might not have the money to fix it. Right. And it's not getting done because it's not a priority. It's because... never happened to me. I've never not had enough money to, to fix a, a room. Right. Where did I get the idea that I would? This would be the one time. This will be the one time I can't fix my house. Why? Where does that come from? Why is it the one time? And you, and, and like what people don't know, like people that might be listening, you've been renovating that house room by room this whole time. Yes. So it's not a new concept. It's <laughs> like, a new concept. But I guess when we had another bathroom, we could use the other bathroom. And it did take a while to do that bathroom because he was traveling and not working on it. And then his days off, I'd be like, so how about we um, do some tile work in that bathroom? And he's like, how about it's my day off and I don't do it. <laughs> so I, it did get done. No, it's gotten done. Every room has gotten done except the kitchen. Yeah. I'm being a damn ninny. <laughs> it's us. We make a problem and then we solve it. And it's not even the solution we want to the problem. Like, we make a problem and we solve it with, a, like, a, the first instantaneous safe solution. And then it's not even a solution that we want. Right. So, that, like, that fake fear that we've been talking about this whole time. Yeah. Every one of us has to deal with it. We could start a, a business that society looks at like a con. I mean, how many times do you get flagged on Pinterest and Facebook for trying to run an ad? Oh, they don't let me run ads. <laughs> so they tell me that, I, I, that yeah. we are a con, and yet we have no fear of running our business that way. The real Wait. con is society. Society. You can't throw away <laughs> shoes at the front door, and I can't. I couldn't throw away moving boxes when I went to movie. So many clothes that I have two dressers and my kids' closets. I took their closets. <laughs> that's how much clothes i have that are all going like they're all leaving that's it. Can't do it can't make do a it. commitment i'm going to commit to redoing my kitchen dude i'm having this shit done by friday because i gotta take it up to my mom so all this stuff is going we have no space i can't breathe i'm tripping over stuff i sent you a picture of my hallway there's shit stacked in my hallway <laughs> yeah i've been doing that for two weeks with my house i have been throwing everything out my trash truck comes on like Friday morning. So everything's been going out Thursday night. My house feels so nice. I walked through my house and I was like, wow, this was the house I bought. Yeah. Not what I was living in two weeks ago. I was yeah. like, gross. Millionaire me would never live like that. <laughs> no. And that's what we're doing. We're embodying where we want to be now. Where we want to be right. now. We want to live the way that per version of us lives right now because that version of us is the successful version. That version of us doesn't stress over shit that's piled up in the hallway or shoes by the front door. Like, we don't need 10 coats each. We don't need that. We need one coat. I don't even wear a coat all winter. I end up in a hoodie every time I leave the house. So right. what, what am I doing? <laughs> we need to, like, chill out. Get out of this fake fear. And and my mom, my mom's like a mild hoarder, okay? And she would kill me if she listens to this podcast, but my mom's like a mild hoarder. So, I have like all my kids' baby teeth. Why do I why do we do that? I don't know. I didn't do that. I worked in a dentist office. So I've I have like <laughs> I have all of my kids' baby teeth. I have their like onesies and baby blankets and all. Why do I have that? My husband has kept um cuz he's more sentimental than I am he kept all their hospital bracelets he kept their one onesie they went home from the hospital and he kept that one of their baby blankets yeah I but know. I don't need all this stuff I have the kids I'm right? already I'm already suffocated by the kids why do I need all <laughs> I of their stuff, stuff. <laughs> I have the kids <laughs> I don't know don't know. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out why I was keeping moving boxes that weren't my moving boxes and I was planning to move somewhere that I didn't know I was planning to move to. I don't know. Yeah. I'm really concerned about that actually now that I said it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> They're gone now, thank God. <laughs> yeah, good. 
but... maybe someone was telling you to move <laughs> i mean i'd like to ideally it would be awesome to move um but when the time I, comes uh, for I, it yeah and by then i can go to the liquor store and get the free boxes they're always happy to give away boxes at the liquor store i have a goal to hit six figures in my bank account when I hit six figures in my bank account, I will move. And at that point, I will buy boxes. And that's how I feel. Yeah. Like, why do I think that when I move, I won't be able to afford boxes? If I can afford to move, I can afford boxes. I don't know. I think it's just like that first little, you know, when you're moving and it's fresh and it was hard to get those boxes because it is hard to round up boxes. You know, uh, no, it's not I, really. No. I have trauma with this. That's what it is. I have trauma with this because I lived in motel rooms when I was a teenager. I didn't have a place to live for a long time. And I bounced around and I always lost my stuff. And when I moved back to Maryland from Florida, we had bed bugs and we got rid of all of our stuff. And so it made me feel like I was going to lose my stuff again. And so I just have all this stuff. But now I realize that losing stuff isn't the problem. <laughs> <laughs> In yeah. fact, if anything, that was teaching me to not get attached to stuff because it's just stuff and it can all be replaced and it's been replaced every time. Every time. Every time it's been replaced. Like every house I've lived in that I've lost all my stuff, I've accumulated more stuff than what I lost. So I feel like I could lose some stuff. Right. My mom says I have the opposite problem. Our house burned down when I was little. And then my parents, after the divorce, we would run from landlords in the middle of the night. <laughs> and so it was like whatever you could fit in your backpack. And so you lost a lot of stuff. So we were always, you know, losing stuff. We were losing stuff every six months when my mom was running from the landlords. So then she's like, you're not attached to anything. You'll just, you'll just walk away from everything. Yeah, I will. I will. I will pack my backpack right now and go. <laughs> I saw a stand-up comedy episode one time, and um, he said, have you ever seen the show Hoarders? It makes me want to get rid of my couch. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, this has got to go! I should watch an episode of Hoarders. I'll be like, this can go, this can go, this can go. We don't even touch this. <laughs> like, Right? I mean, my daughter watches that sometimes, and then we'll watch it together, and we'll be like, okay, we got to go clean stuff. Yeah. <laughs> this house is starting to look eerily familiar. <laughs> right? I mean, that is seriously, like, this is probably the worst I think my house has ever been. Stuff was piled up against every wall. And I was like, this is really gross. This is just, it's, it's everywhere. If you don't have the shelves for the stuff, then it's got to go. Exactly. Yeah. And my husband recently received a box from his brother with this crazy, ugly ass uh, sweater in it. He thinks... The brother, my brother-in-law, thinks my father-in-law hired someone to make him that sweater in Alaska, but he's not positive. Oh, but we're going to keep this sweater now. <laughs> my husband put it on, and he looked like he was trying to wear a sweater from the baby gap. It's always the men. And he's like, I think that this would look good. And I stopped listening. I was like, it's never going to work. You just tune him out. <laughs> never. I don't even know what he said. I was like, no, just stop. Get it off before one of the kids sees you. They're going to make fun of you and your confidence is going to be in the tank. I was making a post last night about um, sensitive kids. And I realized that all three of my intuitive kids have ADHD. So I looked at Kevin and I was like, do you think I have ADHD? Because I'm like wondering if there's an association. And he goes, no sometimes because when he'll, he'll be talking to me but if i'm not interested in it i'm gone i'm like not even there anymore that's that's not our fault i like, don't think that's adhd though it, it doesn't justify our response so i stop listening because i'm not gonna answer you because it's already gotten to the point where it's stupid like he's trying to squeeze into this sweater that may or may not have been his dad's why do we have to keep the ugly sweater and we don't even know whose it was. We don't even know whose it was. And his dad was bigger than Brian. And Brian can't get it over his pectorials. He can't even zip it up. And I was like, I don't think that was your dad's. Unless it was his <laughs> when he was like seven. So can we just let the ugly sweater go? I mean, it is dog ugly. I'm going to show you. Oh, it's my ugly. God. <laughs> so, <laughs> it looked ridiculous. Oh well, all right, guys. Well, I'm going to link our... Um, our 
mastermind service to the group and um and the group in the show notes so that you guys can check us out and join us if you want to and maybe do something this week until friday when we post our business session we do business sessions on friday on here now so you guys can get a sneak peek into what our business sessions are like for business building um but in the meantime i hope you guys find a way to conquer some fear and get uncomfortable this week right all right you guys have a great week bye bye